Hello and welcome to part three of my pinup basics series. This video today is all about hair. Um, in my last two videos, I covered clothing, how to build a vintage wardrobe, this starting from scratch. And then um, in part two, I covered accessories, what kinds of things you should buy when you're starting out. And today we're gonna talk about just the basics of vintage hair and what kinds of things you need to get started. So let's start with our supplies here. In my little vintage tin here, I've got a couple of things. And I'm just gonna pull them out um, as I go. So this one is not a must, but it's just something that I used like um, today. And um, I think it's a good idea to keep in your purse or whatever, your car, just some dry shampoo. This is nothing fancy. I got this from the Dollar General or like dollar store. And it actually smells really good. It's just nice to have when you need texture in your hair and maybe your hair is a little greasy, you know, um, with vintage sets, sometimes you'll wear them for a couple of days. I have typically pretty dry hair, so I mostly use this for like just texture and volume. This is a volume and fullness dry shampoo, so it's specifically meant for that. Um, another thing that I use all the time, I actually didn't use today because I haven't put any product in my hair because later on I'm going to show you how to do some things with your hair. But pretty much every single day I use this Suavecita pomade. It smells so good. And um, this just helps tame flyaways and frizz, which you're probably gonna have a lot of with vintage hair and it also helps with hold and like normally I would have teased this some um, and then I would use this and it would help to just like keep that back there where I want it if I pull my hair off to the side like this which I do often kind of helps me slick all of that back you don't want to use too much of this don't go crazy like a little goes a long way I've had this one container for I don't know almost a year <laughs> and like it's still pretty darn full Another Suavecita product, which I lost my lid to, but this is the grooming spray. And this stuff smells great too, which is just a bonus. And it also works really well. Um, I put this in my hair when I do wet sets or sometimes even before I use um, heat on my hair too. It's not really, um, you know, a heat protectant or anything. I just like that. It gives me a little extra hold and it smells good but you don't have to use that. Um, obviously, you can go to any drugstore or beauty supply store and get whatever pomade, wax type product you want. Um, you can get whatever um, setting lotion you want. Those are just what I have. Another thing I like to have handy is clips. Now I have some like duckbill clips that I'll show you in a second um, that I use for actually pin curling my hair. But these um, just are a little more heavy duty and they hold a lot more hair at once. So when I'm like sectioning off large pieces of hair, this actually helps hold them up better. Um, I got these on Amazon, real cheap. Came with like a huge number of them. I will honestly never use half of them because it gives you, they give you so many and I really don't have that much hair. My next item here is a very essential pen up hair styling, vintage hair styling item, which I just bought these on Amazon actually because I was kind of running low, I didn't have enough. There's nothing worse than getting halfway through pin curling your hair and realizing that you don't have enough clips yet to finish. Yeah, it really stinks. So I have a couple different sizes in this. I just got this pack on Amazon, I'll link it below. And it came with a little container, which is nice, and it has a bunch of different sizes. So first we have Call them alligator clips, duck bow clips, whatever you want to call them. But like a more rectangular one right here. Very simple. Um, these are good for um, whether you're using heat or whether you're using a wet set. If you want to pin curl your wet set instead of using rollers, these are good. Um, and then it came with a second size, which is a little bit skinnier. And I find these ones are really nice for like when you get around the nape of your neck and um, you don't have as much other hair there to hold on to and it starts to fall out. 
These have a much better grip on them. They're a little skinnier, so easier to slide through your curl. And they've got kind of like, I don't know if you can see that, but they've got teeth on them. So they grip a little bit better. So I like those a lot. And then these I use more so for like styling purposes. If you're doing waves and you wanna help kind of set the wave in, you're doing like a page boy type style, this is when you're gonna want something like this, which is like um, a duck bow clip like I showed you before, but a lot longer, skinnier version of that. So I have enough to do my hair and extra. So it's awesome, I think. I only paid, I don't know, less than $10 for this whole thing and this isn't even all of them so those are a definite must-have now when you're pin curling your hair you can also use it's not highly recommended that you use this but when i started out i didn't have anything else so i would sometimes use bobby pins and even now there are times where i'll use rollers or i'll use um the clips like i just showed you the pin curl clips and one of them will still be kind of sagging or going in a different direction that I want it to, and I'll kind of tighten it down. So it's not like you can never use these. Um, they have that little crimped part on there, and sometimes that tends to leave like dents in your hair that you don't want. They just don't typically give you the look that you want. Another item here that's pretty essential for me is a comb. Now, I have like a ton of these, and I always keep like I have two smaller ones like this that I like keep in my purse or my car or whatever so I can just you know, touch up wherever I'm at, you know, do a little teasing, whatever, um, throughout the day. I was, but I have a larger one of these. I have one with a rat tail comb, which just means that it has kind of a skinny end on it to where you can easily, you know, part your hair and adjust things and pull up on there. Um, some of them have kind of like the three-pronged wire at the um at the end or like middle prongs at the end do the same thing with those um but this works just fine for me i don't feel like it's necessary that you have to have a rat tail comb you can also get um a teasing brush which has you know very stiff bristles um and that's all going to depend on the type of hair you have for me my hair is um on the thinner side um it's pretty straight not exactly stick straight but it's it's almost there and it um, is pretty dry I don't have a lot of issues with oil so I'm just gonna give you that whole rundown right there so something I say may not work great for you because you might have a totally different hair type and what I do on me may not exactly give you the same results so the first thing you want to do is figure out what your hair type is and think about that so something um, that like a comb like this may not work for teasing your hair if you have this very thick, heavy hair. This may not do the do the trick. So you might have to try a different thing. But I mean, you can get all these types of tools at a beauty supply store like Sally's, at uh, on Amazon, at even like at Walmart. You can totally go and go to your different any drugstore and find these things. These aren't like um, you know hard to find. The next thing that I like to use, and there's different forms of these, um, is rollers. When I do a wet set, I don't really like to pin curl. I just feel like I lose a lot of volume and I'm not the best at it. Um, it's one thing when you're using a curling iron and then you roll, um, which I'm gonna try to insert a little clip here of what that looks like because I did my hair before doing this video. I did get a little clip of what it looked like when it was all pinned up and I used a curling iron today. So this is the results of my curling iron, which are a little bit different than the results of say um, a wet set. This is what I would use if I were doing a wet set. These are my pillow rollers. They're just um, Con Air. They're, I think I paid like $8 on Amazon for these. Um, pretty simple how they work. This is a little piece of foam, kind of like foam rollers that have the snaps, you know, like the pink ones that you always see. They come in different colors, but I always think pink when I think of them. Same kind of concept, except it doesn't have the snap. So same foam in the middle and then wire on the ends. And then you just take the wire and twist and your hair will stay inside. That's how that works. I really like these. I switched to these from doing um, the more traditional foam rollers because I didn't like the way that the 
um, snaps would leave dents in my hair. So I like these. Also, they have like those rods, which I have never tried before, so I can't comment on those. I see people use them all the time and get great results. Um, I don't think that something like that would work very well in my hair. So when doing wet sets, there's a couple things that you need to know. Um, first of all, first and foremost, with any sort of vintage styling, when you're starting with the curl, you want to make sure you get those ends curled in there real good. So if you have ends sticking out, you do a roll and then at the end of your roll, you've got ends sticking out, whether it's a pin curl, whether it's a foam roller, whatever, you're using a curling iron, that's not going to look vintage. You're going to get more of like when you see kind of that very popular modern style of sort of waves with like the straight ends, that's very modern. That's not gonna give you this kind of a look. So you need to get those ends in there. Oftentimes, you know, I'll have pieces of hair that curl better than others, and that's not as obvious. You know, you can brush that out, manipulate it, but your ends not being curled is something that's kind of hard to hide, unless you're going to put your hair up. That's definitely one of the more difficult parts, I think, for people when they're starting out. I think it was for me. Trying to do any kind of roll, even if you're doing one as a style, so say you're doing like victory rolls or a barrel roll in the front, and you're just putting it up, it's not even just to curl it. That can be an issue if you don't already have your hair curled. So if you're gonna do something like that, even if you plan on leaving the rest of your hair kind of straight, like if you're putting it in a ponytail or something, I suggest just curling it with the curling iron a little bit. The second thing is that when using a wet set, you don't wanna to use too much moisture, okay? So you do not want your hair sopping wet because it's gonna take forever to dry, first of all. Second of all, it is not going to really give you the results that you want. You're gonna to go to brush it out, and if you don't have it dry all the way, but you know it feels dry on the outside, and then you take it out, you really can't go back and fix that. You know, if you've already taken out all your curls, all your pin curls or all your um, rollers, it's kind of hard to go back from that point. And if it's still wet, it's not gonna stay curled. It's not going to be fully set the way you want it to. It's kind of like baking a cake. If you uh, look in the oven, oh, well, it looks really good. And then you take it out and you stick a toothpick in it, you check it, well, the inside's still goo. So when you go to cut that cake, it's gonna fall apart. So you wanna make sure that your hair is fully set. That also goes um, with when you're using heat. A Conair Walmart curling iron. I've had forever, it actually probably, oh, it doesn't look dirty, good. <laughs> um, this is a very, I think this is a half inch, half inch, yes. I think this is a half inch, maybe smaller than that. Um, I also have a regular one inch curling iron, but um, my actually, right before I did this video, actually, uh, my one inch curling iron decided to die on me. Um, it had lived a good life, it had been good to me, so I can't complain, but I'm gonna have to get another one now. So, this is all I had for today, and it worked out pretty okay. Um, I definitely got some tighter curls with it. When it comes to heat styling, um, you want to think about the size of your barrel that you're curling with, or if you're using a straightener. But I use a curling iron, and like I said, I just use a one inch. Um, the important thing is to remember barrel size in ratio to the sectioning. So if you're taking really tiny, tiny, tiny sections, and then you use a really, really, really skinny curling iron, you're gonna get really, 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 really tight curls. So if that's what you want, that's great. But if it's not what you want, then you need to think about, okay, I'm using a smaller curling iron, so I need to take sections that are a little bit larger. Or um, I'm using a larger curling iron, so I need to take smaller sections to make sure I still get enough curl to get the look that I want. Because if you use, say, a one and a half inch or two inch curling iron, um, two inch curling iron is probably not gonna give you this vintage look. You're gonna want a little bit tighter curl. Um, when you first curl your hair, whether it's with a wet set or with um, heat, either way, it's probably gonna come out looking a little crazy. It's gonna be a little Shirley Temple-esque looking. Um, I'll show you a little picture here of what it looked like when I was just using my fingers at first to, to um, brush this out. Um, it looked a little crazy. It's hard to imagine that it ends up looking like this, but it will. Patience. Patience is important. So barrel size and um, ratio of your sectioning is very important. How you section, 
and the way you set your hair, so like a set is, you're, you know, you're setting your hair, you're um, letting it marinate and get molded into the shape that you want. So it needs to have time to dry or to cool down. The more time you give it, the longer, um, the better the longevity of your look is going to be and the um, probably better looking it's going to be. Time is key. You want to give it time. It can be really hard to be patient. If you're somebody who has to get up early in the morning to go to work, you probably don't want to try to do a set right before you go to work. So what I suggest is sleeping on it, wrapping it in a scarf. Um, in my last video I did accessories. I talked about what scarves are kind of better for what things and that kind of thing. It's like a nylon for me. It's breathable. So if I have made my hair got a little too wet while I was doing my wet set, I might use that. Um, silk is good because it, it helps your hair not to frizz um, and it's comfortable on your head. So you wrap it up in something, you can put a turban over it. On Amazon, I think you can actually buy turbans now that you can just like stick over top of it and it would hold everything in place. So look around on there. You can also get scarves, nylon scarves, even that look vintage on Amazon too. Link those in my last video, I'll link them below here. Um, so a scarf, something to put over your head so while you sleep. And that goes for heat too, although you don't need quite that long with a curling iron. It's just if you're getting up at 5 a.m., you probably don't want to have to get up even earlier to try to set your hair, you know? So it's all about timing. Um, that's one bonus to wet sets is that um, if you have to get up the next day and go do something and you don't have a lot of time the next day to work on your hair, but the night before you do, then you set your hair and then by the morning, all the curling is done and all you've got to do is brush it out and kind of mess with it, shape it the way you want it, and you're done. So it actually can be more convenient in the long term. Now, in the short term, it takes longer for your hair to dry probably than it's going to for it to just cool down from the curling iron. So it's all about what you're gonna be doing and what's gonna be most convenient for you at the time. Um, also, like with my hair, I find that I have a much different texture and different curl when I do a wet set compared to um, like today I did a heat set um, I tend to get less frizz with a heat set I tend to get a smoother look but I also tend to get um, I think a little less body and the longevity is not as is not as good as when I do a wet set um, today I would normally have teased my hair a whole lot more than this I like volume and Today I did none of that. So I really just took it out and brushed it, that's all. Um, also some people who have their hair takes really, really well to curl. Mine takes pretty well to curl, but I will see some people uh, like on YouTube really just brushing it out. I mean, as hard as they can, and they're just going totally ham on it. Mine can't take that. Eventually the curl would come out of my hair. So it just depends on how curly you want the look to be that day too. If you're wanting a really sleek, very just like, oh, I just want a soft wave, then you're gonna to wanna to brush more. And the good thing about um, vintage sets is that even though they're kind of unpredictable sometimes, and of course, let's just be honest, I feel like that's true with everybody's hairstyle, no matter what you're doing, sometimes your hair just doesn't wanna do what you want it to do. You know, we all have those days. But with vintage hair, um, you know, it can be a little bit more unpredictable, but at the same time, um, the hair kind of molds itself into something and although it may not be exactly what you were expecting, it can be pretty easy to turn it into something good. So you don't necessarily have to have a bad hair day. Maybe it's not going to be in the same style you were hoping for, but it's probably going to turn out good. Not 100% of the time. So if you have a bad hair day, please do not blame me. <laughs> Just want to put that in there. Disclaimer. Okay. You may have bad hair day now and again, but for the most part, you can usually try to manipulate it into something else. So maybe your hair was supposed to be down, now it's gonna be up. So when using heat, you wanna let it cool down. That's probably gonna be about, I don't know, it just depends. If, the more time you have, the more time you should just let it go. If you're just sitting at home and you're not gonna be doing anything that day and you're not going anywhere until later, let it sit for as long as you possibly can. But I would say, 20 to 30 minutes is like the minimum amount you should do 
if you really want it to get good and set in. Not that you can't do it earlier than that. It will still curl, but it may not last the whole day. Um, with me, especially with humidity, a set like this does not last as well as my wet set does. It just gets a little flat and a little eh, faster than a wet set. Um, now, um, doing wet sets, I would say the important thing is also to know your hair. Really with any set, it's important to know your hair. I have a cowlick in here. I have a cowlick back here somewhere that kind of does some weird stuff sometimes. I know that about my hair, so I have to curl it in a direction and in sectioning that I know works for me. And this is something you might just have to play around with a little bit because I can't give you the perfect formula for your hair if we have different hair. So I can't just say, okay, do these three steps and your hair will turn out exactly like mine. It's just not how it works. But um, I can promise you that if you practice, you will get better at it. And do not be discouraged if the first time you do it, it doesn't turn out exactly the way you had planned. Also watch videos like you're doing now. Um, look at pictures and figure out what type of look you really like. Because vintage hair, even within vintage hair and even within vintage clothing, there is different styles that might suits you or flatter you more than others. So if you're someone who likes to have bangs, then make sure that you've figured out how you want to style your bangs. If you're someone who likes to have your hair out of your face, you might want an updo of some kind um, or something where it's more sweeping backward instead of forward, something like that. Um, also, you might have a job where one style is more suited than another. So come up with a couple different styles that are easy for you and then practice them, practice them, practice them. I will show you real quick just a few simple things. Like I know when most people think of vintage hair, um, they think about barrel, barrel rolls and um, victory rolls and things like that. And um, those are super fun, but you gotta conquer the basics of curling and getting the foundation right. Um, and then you can start doing more fun things. So first I'm going to show you how I would do a front barrel roll here. So I'm going to put my little comb here and my bobby pin. I'm going to section it. Now my hair is already curled, which makes it a lot easier. Like I said, if you want to leave the rest of your hair straight, that's fine. But I would do something to the part that you're going to be rolling um, in order to keep it um, in that shape because stick straight hair, trying to roll it, it's not going to be easy. So you take your section and decide which direction you're going in. We're going to be going like this sideways. So I'm going to grab it like this. I'm not teasing it just because I'm going to be taking it out in just a second. So. You can use your fingers to help. I like to start up here, wrap around, and then sort of tuck those ends in like this. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, kind of tucking those ends in and looping them around. Or that kind of takes some practice. So I would start like this, go to the end of your hair. Now I don't have any layers right now. So if you have layers, especially, you're gonna to wanna to put some curl in it before you do this because your hair is are gonna, I don't even have layers and I still have like flyaway hairs that are trying to get out. So you're gonna roll it like this. Just roll it on top of itself. And then, oh, it's right here. Where did I put the button? There it is. This is an attractive look right here. Oh yeah, super cute. And now I only have a couple bobby pins on me right now. Um. There's different things you could do from here. So you can manipulate this. I just put one bobby pin in there. I don't have very heavy hair. So normally, you know, if I were gonna wear this out, I'd put more in there to secure it. But since I'm just showing you real quick, I can turn that into bangs, into kind of faux bumper bangs. Now you can also get a hair rat or 
um, you can get like one of those um, bun things, you know, the things you roll down, they make a bun, um, and cut it in half. It's the same thing as a hair wrap. And then cut it to your liking and use that. Take a large section. I don't have one currently with me because mine kind of like unraveled and fell apart finally, so I have to get another one. This is just not a good week for my hair st styling tools for some reason. It's like I decided to film this video and they just decided to die. <sighs> anyway, so if you had one, you could do even bigger bumper bangs that would wrap around all the way around here. Um, and I will get one and I will do a video on that when I get a new one. But for right now, I'm just gonna talk you through it. So you would just take a larger U-shaped section of hair, pull it out like I did with this, but you would roll it around the hair rat until you got to the end and then pin it to your head. And then you would kind of um, sweep the hair across it to cover it up. It's especially easy if you have darker hair. With me, it's a little harder to hide. So if you're like blonde, or red hair like I do, lighter hair, um, you might find it a little more difficult. I think they might have different shades of them though, depending on where you go. Don't take my word for it, but I, I feel like I have seen some that are for like blonde hair. That would be a little easier to hide. But with this, pretty simple, just a little mini bumper bang kind of look here. Um, so you can turn your roll into that. So like maybe your bangs aren't working so well that day, you just pin them up also would look cute with an updo. Or, and see now it's kind of doing it on its own because I already curled it that way. Or, um, and I will do some videos on this. So again, I'm gonna roll it up. This time I'm gonna kind of take it and twist it to the side, kind of laying it flat. And we'll see if my hair will actually cooperate with this. be difficult without more bobby pins but and you always try to hide them the best you can but sometimes it's a little difficult um, especially if you're like me like I said if you don't have dark hair and you have dark bobby pins they're just it's hard to get them completely invisible you know even this one is sort of meant to be my hair color and it's still not totally hidden but you just do the best you can and again I would have teased this so it would look a little different but this is sort of a Call it a suicide roll, which it does not. Um, again, the teasing would help it cooperate a little better, but you see, it's sort of a fanned out flat roll that is sort of a bang. So you can do that. And again, the premise of all of this is rolling it and then just turning it or manipulating it. So if you can get down the roll part, you're good. So again, we're just gonna roll it the way I like to do it. You can start from the end. So you can start from the end like this, use two fingers, that's usually about the width you want. Get those ends tucked, and I like to pinch it. Pinch it where those ends are, so I know they're in there good. And I just switch fingers. Pinch, pinch, swoop, pinch, pinch, swoop. And now we can do the other direction. I like to do this. So I'm gonna lay it over my fingers to get it to get this part where I want it to be and then create my roll. And this can be a little difficult if you don't already know how to do the roll part. You know if you're still kind of learning this may not be the way you want to try it but yes I'm going to manipulate the roll afterward instead of doing the roll first because um, my bangs are being finicky. end in there come on get in there dude if you talk to your hair that usually helps I find it very helpful if you boss it around tell it what to do again that ultra attractive face that I like to do when I put bobby pins in my mouth super cute okay there we go so You can do something more like this. Obviously a little more neat than that. Kind of a backward 
roll. And then of course there's victory rolls, which is more of a half up thing. So I'm just gonna take my thumb here, put it next to my ear, pull up a section. See if I can fit my hair in here. I'm not used to having this much hair. Um, roll it just like I did with the others. Kind of backwards way. Now I don't usually wear a victory roll, I'll be honest. It's been a minute since I've done this. So now that I've got it tucked, as you can see, this is all nice and smooth against my head and the whole thing is rolled. So now I kind of have this little like rabbit hole here. And that's where I'm going to stick bobby pin down into that to anchor it. It also hides the bobby pin pretty well. And there we go. Now, when you're done, you may also on a typical day I want to tease this area right here as you can see like I have this part right here where my hair likes to separate and so I would usually tease this to make it more sturdy as well as just to cover up that little bald spot that I got going on do the other side and even if you have bangs you can still do this but you're gonna the teasing is gonna help cover up any little hairs if you have bangs um, like side sweat bangs um, and then also product like the Suavecita pomade, something like a wax or a pomade is going to come in handy with helping all of this get smoothed out and stay. Especially if you have bangs. So I'm gonna take a section over here, try to make them pretty equal, but I have more hair on this side of my head, so I like a deep part. Um, do the same thing as you did before. Roll, roll, roll. And pin. And obviously, if I were going to go out, I would need more pin than this because this would not hold up very well. Then you want to go back in, adjust your curls. I like to use a comb. I feel like it reduces frizz, but a paddle brush or a Denman brush, something like that, would also have like a firm bristle bristle brush. A firm bristle brush would also work to help um, brush out curls. And of course, I always start with my fingers first, just to begin with. But there you have it. And all of those things can be incorporated into updos, into um, in the hair looks for your hair is down. And also, you could do just one side. You could do something different with your bangs. I often like to just do like a pin curl if I want a certain look to my bangs and they're not doing it. Like I don't like what this looks like over here. I could just take this hair, roll it, manipulate it, and kind of pin it like that where I want it. So that's another way that knowing how to do pin curls kind of comes in handy because it helps you in the process of curling the hair and the process of styling it whether you're putting it up or not so that is all of my tips and tricks um i will do a hair tutorial soon um and I'd love to know what kinds of stuff you want to see. If there's something in particular that you want to know how to do, um, please comment below and I will figure out how to do it and I will make a video of it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this, all you have to do is come over here and click on my face and it will take you to where you can subscribe, hit that little bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video or you can go watch part two of this series, which is Pin Up Basics, by clicking on this rectangle over here. Go to my playlist, there's also a part one, which is on clothing.